re reopened the session and request the candidate and the two assistants to stand in front of this table. The doctorate board of Eindhoven University of Technology, represented by us, has examined your dissertation and heard your defense of it. On the grounds of the aforementioned, the doctorate board has decided to award you the degree of doctor. I request that the first promoter acquit himself of the duties entrusted to him. Uit kracht van de bevoegdheid ons toegekend door de wet en namens het college voor promoties bevorder ik u, Elan Mohamed Tafik Fadali, tot dokter en verleen ik u de rechten die verbonden zijn aan de dokterstitel. Deze toekenning geschiet met het predicaat cum laude. Ten bewijze hiervan overhandig ik u het diploma ondertekend door de rector Magnificus en de promotoren. So, door, dear Dr. Fadali, dear Elam. Um, well, I have the pleasure to be the first one who can congrat congratulate you. Well done, I'm very proud. And as you can see, I have a lot of texts. So, because there is no party and no drinks, I took the liberty to just, well, made it a bit longer than, than usual. And let's, let's start with the beginning, so how we met. So, we virtually met uh, during a lecture uh, for the Erasmus uh, program in Leuven, organized by uh, Jode Boek, who was in your committee. And this was broadcasted to other universities, so also to uh, Gothenburg, uh, Chalmers University, where at that time you were working on your master's thesis and you were working on, uh, on nanowires. Well, you sent me an email that you were interested in a PhD project. And after a detour via Delft, you started your PhD work uh, in our group four years ago. And you took up a really big challenge. Well, as made clear in your pre presentation and your thesis, the goal was to, de to develop a light source which can be integrated on a silicon chip. And following the predictions from the 70s, so 50 years ago, um, we had the idea to fabricate silicon germanium with the hexagonal crystal structure. But as you also nicely mentioned, these materials had never been realized before. And the question was, okay, how can we do this? So in our group, we had uh, developed the crystal uh, structure transfer method a few years before. And for your project, we actually needed a template, a hexagonal template, with the right lattice parameters. And well, after a bit of a chaotic brainstorm, we decided to use uh, Woodside gallium arsenide nanowires. And these Woodside gallium arsenide nanowires had been shown before by other groups, also by the group of uh, Jagadish, for instance. But the challenges were to get it really phase pure, so really purely Woodside, and wires with the right length. So these wires up to now were like maybe two microns. And for our applications, we needed first of all a big volume because we wanted to probe the optical properties. And secondly, for, for well, the, the future applications like lasers, we need like tens of micrometers. So these were the, well, the, the starting challenges. And you basically had to develop the whole material system from the start. And your project was a kind of balancing act. Uh, on the one hand, you had to optimize the materials quality and for this, you had to study and understand the growth mechanism, which was not straightforward. And on the other hand, you were supposed to fabricate samples for all the collaborators in our European project. And you have worked extremely hard. You typically went into the clean room for a few months in a row, and you only came out when you had reached your goal. You are a, perfect, a perfectionist and very ambitious, which is good for the project and to, well, and to reach your goals. But a number of times, we were worried about your health. You have had serious problems with your back, and standing in the clean room is then not ideal. We discussed this a few times, and then you gave yourself one day off. And one day off was really the maximum amount of days that you granted yourself. Well, I'm happy that directly after submitting your thesis, you went to Egypt for a month. And although this was not a holiday, because you polished your thesis and you resubmitted the, the defects paper, um, at least I had a feeling that you could relax a bit. 
Well, after optimization of these gallium arsenide cores, you worked on the silicon germanium shells, and step by step, the optical properties have been improved. So you have removed the gold particle, you have reduced the defect density, and there was a very efficient feedback loop with Alain, and later also with Marvin and Victor, who joined the project. Well, all this work has resulted in very nice optical spectra, and it has been a very intense project, but also rewarding. So the results were published in Nature, and this paper has drawn a lot of attention from the media. So currently, and still every few weeks, uh, extra um, papers appear, but about 80 news articles and interviews have been published or given, and moreover, it has resulted so far in two awards. The first and most important one is the Breakthrough of the Year, 2020, by Physics World. And actually, this is a very prestigious award, which has previously been given to the detection of the Higgs particle and to the imaging of a black hole. So that, that sets the scene. The other award, which we received, okay, it's really at a different level, it's the Kijk Jury Award. Um, for the people who are not familiar with this, so Kijk, it's a Dutch popular science magazine of which I was a well, big fan during my high school time, and therefore at least it's special to me. Well, in addition to the optical properties of this new material system, we've also found a new defect, a, uh, yeah, a new type of crystal defect. And a part of this defect had been observed in the nitrites, but never determination within a crystal. Well, this defect has been analyzed in detail with TM by, by Marcel, your co-promoter. Uh, DFT calculations were done by the Milano and Jena groups and Raman spectroscopy in Basel, the group of uh, Ilaria. And as, as is clear from this list of groups, this project developed also into a large collaboration. And again, this paper was quite a delivery. Well, normally a defect is detrimental for the optical properties, but luckily this defect only gives states in the conduction band and um, the properties do not suffer. Well, this paper has been published last week in Nano Letters. I think it's a very complete piece of work and also a paper to be proud of. Well, you obtained uh, cum laude for your thesis. And this is not only for the nature paper, but of course, that is a manifestation of all the good work. But for me, the main reason for cum laude is that, well, first of all, you have generated an enormous amount of knowledge and insights uh, on this material system, well, which is clear from the huge dimensions of your thesis. Um, secondly, you have worked very independently and were uh, very driven to reach your goals. And finally, you have used these insights to realize this new material system with sufficient optical quality, such that we could well, uh, uh, show the properties. And this may open actually a complete new research field. Well, now a few words on you as a person. I think you are very smart and efficient, and you don't like wasting time. And one example is on your interaction with master students. Normally when a master student starts in a group, he or she can jump on the running train and learn during the ride but you are working like a bullet train. And for some students, it was difficult to follow you. And sometimes these students, they came to me to complain that you went too fast. And I have asked you a few times to well, try to slow down. And I remember that we have <laughs> had a few of these discussions and I know that you really try to slow down, but I also understand that it's very difficult when you are on a mission like you to do this and to be patient. I'm actually happy that you have maintained momentum in the project because that has led to these beautiful results. And since last year, Marco and Wout have joined the project and it's a pleasure to see how you collaborate. You have a very different way of working, but you also see that there's a lot of synergy. As a person, you have developed enormously over the last years. Um, in the beginning, you were a bit shy, also super polite and maybe not so confident. And already quite soon, actually, um, in order to learn about the growth mechanism or the defect formation mechanism, you started to organize journal clubs in our group, discussion sessions, and you coordinate meetings with uh, international collaborators. The last two years of your thesis, you went to um, international conferences to give uh, invited presentations. For instance, in Australia and in Japan, and really at major conferences. And it's really special that a PhD student is invited to, well, to give lectures. Uh, in both cases, I got emails uh, during this conference that these people were really impressed by our talk. And that's also very special, I think. 
Well, via social media, and especially via LinkedIn, we could actually follow what you were doing when you were in Egypt. For instance, you were invited by the Egyptian uh, De Wereld Draai Door, which was broadcasted um, by the BBC. And another time, you were invited by the Prime Minister of Egypt. And if I understand it correctly, you had a discussion with two ministers in Egypt and the bank director about women in science. I think our dean can even learn from this. And most recently, you gave a seminar or a webinar about how to publish in nature. Well, it's really nice to see how you develop from a shy student into such a mature and confident scientist. About the future, so instead of looking for a job, you are approached by Apple to join their team to work on the integration of three fives on silicon and to realize lasers for bio applications. I think it's very nice and very interesting topic, uh, well, clearly related to your PhD work. Your starting date has been postponed from May to June. And a few days ago, you asked me if that is a problem uh, contract wise. Well, of course not. I'm super happy that you will stay uh, one month longer because, well, there are papers to finish. And I'm also sure that Marco and Wouter are very happy that they can get more input from you. Well, before we end, I would like to thank uh, Marcel Verheijen and Jos Havenkort. Um, well, simply said, without them, this project would not have been possible. And finally, I would like to thank the committee members for being in this uh, committee. Uh, well, the members present here, but also online. And finally, I would like to say that it was really a great pleasure to work with you. Uh, congratulations again also to your family. I wish you a lot of success with your career and let's keep in touch. Thank you very much. Uh, I have the privilege to uh, also congratulate you uh, being the second after the first promoter. I'm doing this on behalf of our uh, uh, whole technical university, uh, on behalf of the doctor board, and more specifically on behalf of our department of applied physics. Uh, when I listen to Lodacio of your uh, promoter, uh, I have all grounds uh, to feel that you make us proud. Um, before uh, going to the close of this meeting, I would first like to invite all the committee members, also the online uh, committee members, to say uh, a few words of congratulations. Uh, so you can turn around and look at that screen. They will be able to see you. And I will start with Professor Jagadish. Thank you very much, Chair. And uh, Ellen uh, Fadali, and, and you have really given, you have done outstanding work, and it's really you made a huge impact internationally in the work which you have done. And uh, so, of course, I had the pleasure of meeting you at conferences and interacting with you. Your, your energy and enthusiasm is phenomenal. And uh, so, really, you're talking about uh, phase transformation of uh, cubic crystals to hexagonal crystals. Today, you have the phase transformation from Ms. Fadali to Dr. Fadali. Congratulations. And particularly, you're uh, not only getting PhD, and also university is so proud and then impressed with what you've achieved and then the entire committee unanimously declared that uh, you should receive the uh, cum laude and that's a great honor and you very much deserve it and good luck in your future endeavors please keep in touch and come and visit us in australia well done professor the book thank you very much uh, dear dr fadali dear elam uh, heartfelt congratulations here as well the work was impressive indeed to read. I mean, uh, I can only imagine, as was said uh, by, by Eric, the amount of work that you yourself, but also your colleagues in the characterization uh, um, arena that, that you've uh, given them challenges to look at, must have enjoyed working with you. Um, it, it's very nice to hear that, uh, you know, the, the course that we had uh, where Eric gave a lecture actually connected the both of you. Um, I can tell you, you're on my list to be invited to one of those lectures. I hope you will be willing to give one, uh, even from the distant Cupertino or wherever your travels may, may take you. Congratulations on this. Um, I won't take it uh, much longer. It may become too awkward to, to get all of these, uh, these felicitations here, but it's really well deserved. It's very impressive. Stay critical and uh, as uh, Eric said, don't slow down. Dr. Vessel. Dear Alam, congratulations for this uh, deserved cum laude. Uh, I was really impressed by your dynamism and, and your 
your work, uh, you, you know, you know this. And uh, thank you very much for all this fruitful discussion we had. And I'm looking to forward to have an uh, excellent discussion in, uh, in a couple of days or maybe weeks uh, to finish this article uh, together. And, and thank you. That's, that's all. Thank you very much <laughs> and congratulations. Thank you, Professor Ball. Uh, dear Dr. Ellen, congratulations with your uh, beautiful uh, work and uh, the end, the, the nice finish of it. Um, I, it was really impressive to read your, your thesis and um, I, I really enjoyed it. And uh, I hope you, uh, you enjoy uh, your new job uh, in California and all the best with it. <laughs> Dr. Havakov. Dr. Verdali, dear Elham, I congratulate you a lot with your uh, very nice results on your thesis. And it's also nice to, uh, we, because we all work very alone. And then if you look to our nature paper, then 22,000 people has uh, viewed it online already. So uh, there's a huge crowd following your work, but still, of course, we are, yeah, we only feel very few people. The other thing is, I also like to thank you on behalf of all the optical PhD students. And uh, maybe it's the most important, which we profited a lot from your work. And also myself, so I think your work uh, gives us uh, food for the, uh, the work in the next few years. So thank you a lot. Dr. Vrijen. Dear uh, Dr. Ellen, congratulations. It, uh, I'm very proud of you. Sorry. Um, I know we had discussions um, that you were struggling and worrying about whether you would finally end with the thesis. And I said, I think harvesting time will come. And um, seeing this, this big booklet, I'm, I think you managed very well. Congratulations. Thank you, Dr. Fadali. We are about to uh, close the session. Uh, the last PhD that, that was granted uh, cum laude in our department was almost exactly one year ago. Forty theses have passed in between. So it is quite an honor, quite an exception that you uh, have reached this. So once again, congratulations. Uh, I will now read uh, a few words uh, in which I explain the obligations. After that, uh, the photographer uh, takes control of this meeting. Uh, I close the session and the photographer will give us instructions where to stand. After the photographs have been taken, uh, I invite everybody who, also everybody who is online and who is watching this, then open your microphones and let's finish in a big round of applause. It will be virtual, but it is well audible, the experience tells us. So I want to point out to you that the scientific degree of PhD involves duties as well as rights. As a holder of this degree, you are committed to standards of scientific integrity, trustworthiness, intellectual honesty, openness, independence, and societal responsibility. These standards are described in more detail in the Netherlands Code of Conduct for Research Integrity and in the Eindhoven Code based on it. You also have duties towards society. You must be clear about the boundaries of your own expertise, and you must communicate honestly and independently about the results of your work, including potential risks associated with it. You are committed to the ethical codes for research and design involving human subjects or animals. The session is closed.
just had a round of applause, but I think it came louder than the second one. <laughs>